Hi, Josh Carr here at carrealestate.com. A uh, question I get a lot of times from students when I teach or just from people in general is why, are some, why do some assets have high cap rates and some assets have low cap rates? Uh, there are generally three factors that drive cap rates. And I, I don't want to talk about what's a good cap rate or a bad cap rate. I just want to say why some assets have higher ones and some have lower. Three major factors. And they are in no particular order. Location, quality, asset type. Start with location first. Location. Most people, given a choice, would rather buy buildings in good neighborhoods, that is to say, neighborhoods with lower crime rates, better employment statistics, that sort of thing, than in bad neighborhoods. Same logic holds true for big cities versus small cities. All things being equal, you like to buy buildings in big cities where crime is low and employment is good because basically it makes for a more liquid market. Also, the logic is that if the economy does get into trouble, generally the good areas tend to hold value better than the bad areas. Or, to put it another way, the cash flows tend to be less variable in the good areas than the bad areas. And again, liquidity, bigger cities have more buyers, it's more likely you'll find someone to buy your asset. That's the basic idea. Uh, two, second item, quality. Uh, quality uh, usually is a proxy for age. Newer buildings tend to retain their value longer than old buildings. Uh, higher quality buildings tend to be better than lower quality buildings. Same basic idea less variable cash flows if you're buying a newer building, fewer things break, fewer things get into problems, you tend to retain tenants, you get the idea. And in weak economies, what you usually see is a flight uh, basically to quality. Essentially, when the economy gets rough, people say, well, now that there are you know, five tenants and six spaces, uh, let's move into the five best spaces and leave the worst space empty. That's the basic idea. Finally, asset type, uh, if we think about that there are essentially five major, five major product types, office, retail, industrial, residential, hotel, generally people seem to believe that residential is the most stable, because even when the economy is bad, people have to live somewhere. Uh, hotels tend to be the least stable. When the economy is bad, people say, I'm not going to go on vacation, I'm not going to go on holiday, uh, whereas office, retail, and industrial are in that middle zone tied to economic activity, but, you know, again, not as stable as apartments and not as unstable as, say, hotels. Um, that's the basic idea. Those are your three big factors. Um, the final comment I'd like to make on this is a lot of times when people talk about location, um, you know, they're, they're comments that I can make on each, but like location, for example, when I say big cities or small cities, um, there's a lot of an opinion in this. It's really not necessarily big cities, it's more cities that are known for institutional investment, which is not necessarily the size, it's acceptance in a global marketplace. Uh, so for example, when you look at say New York City versus Chicago, uh, New York City is much better known to foreign markets and foreign investors, so you tend to see lower cap rates in New York versus say Chicago. Um, part of that is tied to economic activity, part of it is tied to size, Part of it is tied to its location of the global marketplace, and part of it is tied to opinion and the perceptions of outsiders and the perceptions of other buyers. So it's not just pure and simple, big cities more liquid, it's more big cities tend to be more liquid because they tend to have more buyers because of lots of things which may or may not be tied to actual economic activity. Uh, in the same way, quality of their comments you can make on. I mean, a class A office building in a major city, like say a New York or a London, is going to be very different in what people are looking for when they say class A than a class A building in the secondary market. Uh, generally in richer cities, people's perception of class A is just higher. Um, asset type, there's not a lot of variation there, though there are lots of subgroups. And depending on where we are in the economic cycle and depending on fads and trends, people discount one versus the other. For example, when the internet first started becoming like a big thing, uh, there were a lot of people who said, well, now that Amazon exists, no one is ever gonna buy anything in a store ever again, so retail is just gonna go away. Um, 
after a period of time, people realized that while retail would be diminished and more people would buy things online, there was still a need to buy something in stores. So retail was not going away entirely. Again, different product types, um, different risk factors. And well, that's the basic idea. So those are your three big factors, location, quality, asset type. And finally, if you want to watch this or other videos, uh, you can obviously look on YouTube. I also have a lot of links on my website at carrealestate.com. That's K-A-H-R realestate.com. And there's a lot of other educational materials there. Okay, so thanks. And uh, don't forget to email me uh, suggestions for future videos at josh at K-A-H-R realestate.com. That's josh, J-O-S-H. Okay. Thank you very much.